light mist, transparent vapor, lost afar and yet distinct, a star gleams softly. How beautiful the azure mystery of her glow beckons me, cradles me. O oh, bring me to thee, far distant star, bathe me in trembling rays, sweet light, sharp desire, voluptuous and crazed, yet sweet, endlessly, with no other goal than longing, I would desire. These are the first lines in a poem that Scriabin himself wrote as a program for his fourth sonata in 1903. It's about some metaphysical journey towards the beaming star and it ends with a kind of cosmic absorption of the self. The sonata has two movements that are connected without a break. The first is more still longing, floating around in space. And in the second, we approach these uh, trembling rays of the stars with a lot of buzzing and intense energy. And musically, there are some extremely interesting things happening here with a cyclic form that makes the two movements come together and with a harmonic language. So this sonata is kind of a turning point in Scriabin's production. From here on he starts to leave the tonal world behind and approach something new. And this style is more mature in the fifth sonata, for sure. The fourth is still more tonal than not, especially in the second movement. But the first eight bars of the first movement is really harmonically disruptive. So let's get into the analysis. So the first eight bars contains the theme that is a basis for the whole movement. I will look in some detail at the analysis, but I won't get bogged down in the details because it's like there's a lot of color notes that are so intrusive that they alter the chords and really disrupt the picture if you try to look at it in a tonal way. So I don't think it adds too much to our understanding to uh, carve out all these details. We just have to accept this semi-tonal world that Scriabin operates within. But I will point out some places where I feel there is an underlying structure, like a cadence or something. So for example, the first observation, the key is F sharp major, but there's almost no F sharp major chords. There's only one on a very weak beat in bar four. Uh, the first chord is, is B major 7th. Uh, very nice, like nostalgic chord. But immediately in bar 2 it gets chromatically altered. And this might be a C sharp 7th 9th chord as a dominant to F sharp major. But it, it's only like in passing. So here, this could be a C-sharp, but we get this A-natural in the bass. That's disruptive. So here we have the F-sharp major, <laughs> but only on the, the weak eighth note beat. And it gets disrupted with a D-natural in the bass. So this is like a D-augmented chord. Now in the end here, we get this sort of a cadence, uh, we get this G sharp 9 to a C sharp 9. Uh, then this F double sharp is disrupting it, but you can see that it's resolving to a G sharp on this, but it's immediately moving on. Um, so. The bass here is a G sharp to C sharp, and it would make sense to have a cadence on the dominant in the end of the phrase, uh, in a way. And also, the chord before this, this D natural, or D augmented, you can see this as a chromatic 2 5 one So, uh, a little bit of a circle of fifth progression. That's just a barely an underlying structure here. And convoglia is with desire, this uh, 
unique scrubbing markings all over this music. Okay, now the final uh, gesture of the theme. This chord. This is the famous Tristan chord. So it's a famous chord uh, by Wagner, introduced in Tristan and Isolde, the opera. And scholars have fierce debates on uh, how you should interpret it and uh, which way it can resolve. I'm not going to get into this in this video, but Scriabin resolves it. So yeah, the technical is uh, augmented fourth, augmented six, augmented nine. And it has a unique character when you reach it because it's just weird, it's not clear where we are at all. So Scriabin goes, resolves it. This is slightly more stable, not at all perfectly stable, but... And now we get a repeat of the theme for eight more bars. Now it's not the B, the nice B major seventh, but it's immediately altered chromatically to this instead of. So it's more chordal, this uh, when you have fourth on top of each other. But now the second time we take a different turn. And it resolves to a pure B flat major. So we also have a cadence here on the F. First, there's some weird stuff, but then F7, B flat, add 9. Super nice. And just staying on this character. Okay, now let's look at the form. So we had the theme two times and a different way the second time. Now starts kind of a episode, a small development section in the movement. And it uses the closing part of the theme. So this uh, gesture of going down what we have here uh, the second time. So we start with this. And we're gonna get this motif six times with uh, different settings. So this is one of those chords that's just, it's technically a, a B flat. The left hand has a B flat seven, and then the right hand is a ninth, and the minus five, so B flat, nine, minus five. But it doesn't really make sense to, because <laughs> you need as much information to say that chord than to just play the notes. Tristan chord again. And now uh, we land, so Scrammer resolves it to the C, and then we repeat it one octave up. And it resolves in a very nice way to G major. So when we get it here, uh, this is actually a kind of an augmented six chord, a French augmented six chord. So it's uh, on A flat, we take the C uh, here, we get this French feeling and resolving to G. Okay, back to the form. Now we get this motif with a falling six and the weird chord again. But now it's uh, transposed, so the first time it, we have B flat in the bass, now it's a whole tone up, so we have C in the bass. Tristan chord. And it's exactly the same, but uh, transposed. And then the final ornament, it reaches slightly higher, the high uh, space star register we get here. Now we only get this motif. Directly again. Sorry. And now it resolves 
uh, more. So we don't get the Tristan chord. Now we get the resolution from A. It is A9 minus 5 chord, whatever. To D. And that's a cadence. But it's not a pure D. It's a D augmented plus 5 and a 7 in the bass. So 7 plus 5. And that, then we get uh, the same thing again, but now it's transposed a semitone down. So the first time is on A. Now we get it on D sharp. So here again we have this tritone chromatic 251 A, D, G sharp, and it's going to resolve to a C sharp. Sorry. And we have the same top note as before, the A sharp, but now when we have C sharp in the bass, this is not an augmented chord, this is a 6th chord. And with the 7 in the left hand, it's like a 13th chord. So now we're getting ready for the return of the theme. Calmando is coming down. And uh, we're going to get the theme pretty much as it is stated in the beginning, but with a variation in texture. So Scrabble finds these twinkling stars up here. And the left hand needs two systems to play the theme with the thumb uh, up here and some accompaniment. Uh, I mean, it can't be easy, uh, this. So if I just play, I cheat now, but this is the theme. nice to be able to play it with two hands but right hand is uh, playing twinkling stars and also the polyrhythm so if you're learning this uh, it's like two steps first get the polyrhythm in place uh, it's not easy and then to make it really shine uh, you need to be able to play the left hand super soft D's chord and uh, melodic Also, I forgot to mention we have this uh, pedal point with the F sharp and the fifth, so it's slightly more tonally grounded now the second time than in the beginning. And then we get the theme again a the second time, and it's more variation of the texture now. The stars are twinkling more intense with the triplets. Really lovely texture, this. Um, to the B flat major and now we're at the close of the movement uh, and this closing section acts as a transition that goes straight into the second movement so we start to get the harmonies that is more from for the second movement than the first so again we have this chordal harmonies on top Nice resolution, very pleasurable resolution this. So lovely to play. It's the same thing again, just one note down. And just to ornament uh, a fill over the scale. And if we look at the bass in the left hand, we have this it starts D sharp, G sharp. C sharp, F sharp, B. So this is a perfect circle of fifth progression, so it's slightly more safe. But then we get some more chromaticism again in the final. And 
now it's uh, accelerando within this, so kind of picking up this buzzing energy. And that's the start of the second movement, which we will look at in the next video. Thanks for watching and a special shout out to my Patreon sponsors M. Valente and J and C and M. Keelan.